Welcome to our lecture online. In this particular problem, the strategy is going to be important. In other words, how do we solve this for p to the n power? So the first thing we might want to do is get rid of the 100 and divide both sides by 100. So you have z divided by 100 equals that particular fraction. But ultimately, when we have something like that, we have the variable in the numerator and the variable in the denominator of that fraction, you may want to have a strategy where you multiply everything out so they have a series of terms on the left side and a series of terms on the right side and then you collect all the, the terms that contain p to the n. In other words, let's rewrite this as follows. This can be written as z over 1 is equal to 100 times c times p to the n divided by 1 plus c times p to the n. And then what we're going to do is multiply this, bring this over here, and bring the 1 over there, and write it as a series of terms on both sides of the equation. In other words, when we multiply this through like this, on the left side we get z times 1 plus c times p to the n is equal to 1 times that, which is 100 c p to the n. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the z with the two terms inside the parentheses. We're going to distribute the z like this. So we end up with z plus z c p to the n is equal to 100 c p to the n. And now we have a linear equation. Two of the three terms contain the variable we're looking for or the p to the n that we're looking for. We're going to move that to one side and everything else to the other side. So that means we're going to move this to the left and this to the right. And so we end up with z, c, p to the n, minus 100 c, p to the n, is equal to the negative z. And notice on the left side, we can now factor out the common factor p to the n, which is what we're looking for. So in other words, we have now p to the n times, on the left side, we have z times c minus 100 times c is equal to negative z. Let's now move this over here to make it a little bit easier to work with it. So let's rewrite the equation p to the n times z c minus 100 c and that is equal to a negative z. And now all we have to do, just like a regular linear equation, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of what we're looking for, p to the n. So zc minus 100c and zc minus 100c. Or in essence, what we could have done is simply said, I'm going to take this, what's inside the brackets, and move it across the diagonal over here. In essence, when this cancels out, that's exactly what we end up with. So on the left side, we have p to the n is equal to a negative z divided by zc minus 100c. And since I don't like that negative sign here, I can multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. And so we get p to the n is equal to a positive z divided by, and flipping these over, we get 100c minus zc. Potentially, we could factor out a c here, and we could write this as p to the n is equal to z divided by c times 100 minus z. And that might be the most simplified form to write it in. But that's how we solve that variable. Notice, the way to do that is to eventually get it into this format right here so we can factor out the common factor p to the n, which is what we're looking for. And that was the strategy, is to cross multiply in such a way that we could isolate p to the n like that on one side of the equation. And that is how it's done.